Pharmaceutical compounding is a branch of pharmacy that continues to play a crucial role in drug development. Pharmacists develop and test pharmaceutical formulations for new drugs to ensure that active ingredients are effective and stable. Physicians may prescribe individually compounded medications for patients with unusual health needs. Compounded preparations are especially common for patients requiring limited dosage strengths, patients with drug allergies, home health care and anti-cancer treatment. Cytotoxic drugs, sometimes known as anti-neoplastic, anti-cancer or chemotherapy drugs, include a wide range of chemical compounds. Because of their ability to kill tumor cells, they are extensively used to treat cancer. However, their actions are not specific to tumor cells, and normal cells may also be damaged. As a result, they can produce significant side effects in patients or others exposed. This, together with the increasing use and complexity of chemotherapy, has raised concerns about the risks to healthcare workers involved in preparing and administering cytotoxic drugs. Increases in health and safety requirements have led to a greater use of isolators to protect both patients and healthcare workers. The United States Pharmacopeia, the USP, and other related organizations have established enforceable guidelines for sterile drug preparation. An example of such guidance is USP Chapter 797, which requires the use of engineering controls such as isolators. While conventional engineering controls such as laminar flow clean benches and biological safety cabinets may be used, USP 797 imposes stricter requirements on the environment in which this equipment must be sited. In isolators, the total physical separation between the product and the pharmacy environment makes them more robust and immune to environmental disturbances. Isolators protect compounded drug products from room contaminants. Some offer operator and environmental protection for handling hazardous drugs. Three different types of isolators are offered by manufacturers, each designed for different applications. Positive pressure isolators are suitable for work involving non-hazardous materials. The work zone and pass-through interchange are under positive pressure to the room in order to maintain sterility in case of a breach in the barrier isolation system. Negative pressure recirculating isolators are suitable for work involving hazardous materials, anti-neoplastic or cytotoxic compounding applications, such as chemotherapy. The work zone and pass-through interchange are under negative pressure to the room in order to maintain operator protection in case of a breach in the barrier isolation system. They may be optionally vented. Negative pressure total exhaust isolators are suitable for work involving hazardous materials that may volatilize. The work zone and pass-through interchange are under negative pressure to the room in order to maintain operator protection in case of a breach in the barrier isolation system. They must be externally vented. Isolators protect the product, and in some cases the operator, through the following. Total physical separation between the product and the environment. Unlike in laminar flow clean benches or biological safety cabinets, the operator works through ports in the front of the isolator. The intentional use of air pressure relationships, positive or negative, defines the direction of air flow in and out of the isolator. This experiment illustrates how a positive pressure isolator protects drug products from contamination, even in case of a breach. Notice how no room air enters the arm ports even with the glove assembly removed. The use of directed airflow, either unidirectional or turbulent, maintains sterility in the work zone. 
Unidirectional airflow, also known as laminar airflow, is the most effective. Isolators incorporating unidirectional airflow typically direct filtered air downward in a piston-like fashion, therefore rapidly purging the work zone of contaminants. This experiment with a smoke source illustrates the efficacy of unidirectional airflow. Notice how all contaminants are rapidly purged and cross-contamination of materials in the isolator is minimized. The use of high-efficiency filters to capture aerosols and particles. Isolators utilize either HAPA or ALPA filters. HAPA filters are 99.99% efficient at 0.3 microns, whilst ALPA filters are 99.999% efficient at 0.1 to 0.3 microns. The supply air entering the isolator is always filtered. Exhaust air exiting the isolator is filtered, except in certain positive pressure isolators designed only to protect the product. The use of external venting on some negative pressure isolators discharges volatilized hazardous drugs out from the building. HAPA or ALPA filters are only effective against aerosols and particles and cannot remove vapors. The use of material transfer processes allows material transfer in and out of the isolator without exposing the operator to drugs or compromising the sterility of the compounding environment. Appropriate personal protection equipment, PPE, and work practices are required to reduce risks to both the patient and the operator. Gloves and gowns with knit cuffs should be worn when compounding sterile drug products. If the work involves hazardous or cytotoxic drugs, use a disposable gown made of non-linting and non-absorbent material. Don a pair of powder-free disposable chemotherapy gloves with the gloves covering the gown cuff. Prior to compounding, verify if the isolator has been properly shut down by the previous user. Methods to verify proper shutdown can include, but are not limited to, a checklist in the pharmacy, a sign-off at the preparation workspace, an electronic log at a local PC or a tagging procedure for the isolator. Turn on the fan. Check the sleeves and gloves for any breach before beginning work, as they are prone to wear. Wipe down the interior of the isolator. Change to a fresh pair of gloves before beginning work and every 30 minutes during prolonged chemo work sessions. Plan the work session before materials are placed in the isolator. Organize the necessary materials for compounding before placing them in the pass-through. Allow pass-through air to purge before the inner door is opened. In order to maintain air cleanliness inside the chamber, both doors should not be opened at the same time. Gloved hands should be wiped to prevent cross-contamination. Place items in the work zone and wipe down. Verify all items required for the compounding session are in the work zone. This includes checking the log number and the expiration date. Use proper aseptic techniques during the compounding process. For example, in an isolator equipped with vertical laminar flow, do not work directly above the compounded products, as this will block first air and increase the risk of contamination. First air refers to air exiting the HAPAR filter in a unidirectional airstream that is essentially particle-free. Ensure the air grills in the interior of the isolator are not obstructed. Do not overcrowd the work zone. Discard sharps in an approved sharps container after use. For applications involving hazardous drugs, use extreme caution when changing the sharps container to make sure it is sealed properly. After completion, wipe down the final products. For chemotherapy drugs, place finished products in sealed plastic bags. Place products in the pass-through and allow pass-through air to purge. 
Remove the final product from the pass-through using clean gloves. Label products before logging and delivery to patients. After the compounding session is complete, thoroughly sanitize the interior of the isolator in order to prevent cross-contamination of the next process. Allow air in the work zone to purge and shut down the isolator if desired. Cleaning and decontamination activities are to be carried out at the beginning of each shift, while the isolator is switched on and running. For cleaning, wipe the surfaces with detergent. This is followed by wiping with sterile deionized water or 70% IPA. The same procedures are followed for disinfection, except that liquid disinfecting agents, such as quaternary ammonium compounds, are substituted for detergents. Always remember to wipe from the cleanest to least clean, in a systematic single direction. Wipes and mops made of polyester knit fabrics are the best choice, as they do not lint or shed. Gaseous sterilization can also be performed if required. Proper and timely maintenance is crucial for the trouble-free functioning of the isolator. Maintenance and service are to be carried out by trained technicians. Recertification is required when the isolator is relocated, isolator performance is suspected, after filter or blower fan replacement, and at least once every six months. Contaminated compounded sterile products can cause negative outcomes for patients such as fever, infection and possibly death. Remember, isolators are not magic boxes that eliminate the need for proper aseptic techniques. They are simply contamination control tools intended to augment well-executed operations. Even though you may not see the patient, always remember that real people the patients receive the compounded products made at your pharmacy. Remembering the loved one rule helps to make patients you may never see seem more real by picturing your loved one receiving the compounded products. We hope you've enjoyed your training with ESCO.